Welcome back. One of the most important concepts behind JPA is this thing called an entity manager. In this and a series of next couple of steps, we would look at entity manager in detail. We'll try and understand all the background details about the entity manager. To be able to understand entity manager in depth, what we'll do is we'll create a simple playground method. I'll call this public void play with entity manager. I couldn't find a better name than that because I, there are a lot of things I would want to play with related to the entity manager. So let's use that name. I'm creating this in the course repository. And what I would want to do is I would want to be able to, oops, this is the debug. So I would terminate the debug thing which is running in the background. In the course repository test, I'll actually start with a simple test. So let's create a very simple test. I'll just call this play with entity manager as well. And over here, what we would want to do is just trigger off the method which is present in the course repository. All that we want to do is play with entity manager. That's it. Repository dot. Let's remove all this stuff. We don't need all this. I would just want to trigger play with entity manager. Play with entity manager, the course repository test would call the course repository method. Play with entity manager and logger dot debug. Let's say info. Oops. Okay, I don't have a logger in here. So let's pull out the logger from here just so that we are very clear of what's happening where. I pulled out the logger and let's say logger.info. We are executing play with entity manager start. Okay. I guess we have all the setup that is needed. Let's run this. What will happen is the application context gets launched. So the schema is created, the data is inserted, and you can see that the play with entity manager start is triggered in here as well. So that's good. So we now have the entity manager play with entity manager method ready. So now let's start playing with entity manager. What I would want to start off by creating a simple course and saving it. So I would want to say entity manager dot persist. So entity manager dot persist is used to create a new thing. So if you want to create a new entity, that's the persist method. So I will say new course of whatever you would want to do. So let's say the new course that I would want to create is web services in 100 steps. So as we saw earlier, this would create a new row. So it would create a trigger an insert query and insert that row into the database. Now, instead of this, what I would want to do is take a step further. Alt shift L. I'll take this into a local variable. I'll call this course. I'm setting a new name for this course. I'll say course.setName web service dot 100 steps updated. Will this update be saved? So what would happen now? Let's try and run this. So not this. Actually, I have to run the course repository test. Right click run as JUnit test. Let's see what's logged in the console. The test succeeds. That I would definitely know. But would the update be fired? So the course is inserted. What is the details that are inserted into the course? Web service in 100 steps. That's pretty cool. And you can see that here there is a, also an update course set name is equal to question mark where id is equal to question mark so it's also updating the new value that i have set it into the name into the database so what's happening in the background is when i run this when this method is called first this row is getting inserted and then this row is getting saved to the database as well but i have not really requested it to save this how is this data getting saved one of the important things is the add transactional annotation. So this entire method is in a single transaction. And while we are within the scope of a transaction, Entity Manager keeps track of all the things that were inserted through it, that were updated through it. Whatever things were modified through it, Entity Manager would start keeping track of them. In this example, the course is something which is being inserted through the entity manager. So whatever changes I make to the course are kept track of by the entity manager. I don't really need to say entity manager dot merge this to save the details. What entity manager does is it would keep track of all the things that are managed through it in here. 
and whenever there is a change on it it would make sure that that change is persisted to the database now let's do one thing let's actually call the repository dot play with entity manager in our launch of the application so i'll do a window perspective open perspective java so i'll go back to the java perspective i'll open up the demo application class and what i would want to do is i'll not really do all this stuff in here right now so let's not need all this stuff all that i would want to do is play with entity manager so repository dot play with entity manager that's the only thing which is called from the demo application right now let's kill everything and start the demo application again so what we are doing in the play with entity manager as of now is creating a new course and setting a name and we saw that when we were running the unit test there was a query which was fired to get the update done but now i would want to actually show you the same thing in the database let's go back to the h2 console continue connect run it's web services in 100 steps updated so whatever changes which we are doing in here are actually reflected down to the database okay so that's lesson number one on entity manager so if you are actually inside a trans that's lesson number one about entity manager whenever you are inside a transaction and you are managing something with the entity manager whenever you are updating something or deleting something or you are inserting something in that particular thing continues to be managed by the entity manager until the end of the transaction so the course here even though i only saved it here whatever changes you are doing to the course later in the transaction are also being tracked by the entity manager and they are also persisted so if i do a set name something after that as well then entity manager keeps track of those changes and persists them we'll talk a lot more about entity manager in the next step until then bye bye